Good morning, students. Today we are going to talk about subtracting with integers. So if this is your second time watching the video, go ahead and take a pause so you can copy the first part of our notes. Uh, this is going to be the first half of your page, so make sure you kind of do a line that separates the top and bottom half of your page. So go ahead and take a pause, copy down the three problems as well as the three vertical number lines. All right, so when we subtract integers or those positive and negative whole numbers, um, there are two situations that can happen. The first situation we're going to go over is what happens when we subtract a positive number. So meaning the first number could be positive or could be negative, but we're subtracting a number that is a positive. And we're going to use number lines to kind of model what happens so you can see what the situation is. OK, so the first situation we're going to have is a situation that um, most of us are probably very familiar with. So we have the problem six minus four. So to model what subtraction looks like, we're going to use a vertical number line. And when we subtract a positive number, OK, we are always going to end up at a smaller value. So that means we're going to go down our number line. So when we subtract and I'm going to put in a circle a positive number, we're always going to go down our number line. So let's model these three problems so you can kind of see what our solutions are going to be. OK, so the first one's pretty simple. Six minus four. Well, if we're at six and we subtract four, we are going to go down our number line uh, four spots. One, two, three, four. And this ends up being positive two. So six minus four is positive two. That's something that I think most of us or all of us should be able to do. Um, when we subtract a number that is smaller than what we start out with, we're going to end up at a positive number. That's why six minus four is positive two. Let's try another example. But in this case, instead of doing a number that is smaller than the first number, we're going to do a number that's bigger. So in this case, we have six minus eight. So we're still going to set up the number line the same way. We're subtracting a positive number. So we're going to go down our number line. So when we subtract six minus eight, we're going to go down eight spots. One, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight. I end up right here at the bottom of my number line. And so um, if I label it, so six, five, four, three, two, one, zero, here is zero. So that means we end up down here at negative two. So six minus eight is going to be negative two. So when we subtracted eight, we ended up at negative two. We went two below zero because we had to subtract six to get to zero, but then we still had to go two more spots to make that total distance of eight. So we end up at negative two. OK, let's look at another situation. In this situation, we're going to start off at a negative. So let's say the top of this number line is zero. Um, we're going to do negative five minus a positive two. Um, you'll see in a moment when we subtract a negative, we're always going to use kind of parentheses to denote what subtraction and what's a negative. But this is saying negative five minus two. So if I locate negative five on the number line, that's going to be five below zero. So one, two, three, four, five, which is right here. So we're going to start right here on the number line. And if I subtract two, that means I'm going to go down the number line two spots. So if I do that, one, two, this ends up being at negative seven. So when I subtract uh, two from negative five, I'm going farther down the number line, farther into the negative. So I end up at negative seven. OK, so if you can see from all of these instances, when we subtract a positive, we are always going to end up our solutions. We are always going to end up at a smaller value. So that's a quick way when you are checking your work. When check and ask yourself, did I subtract by a positive? Yes. Did I end up at a smaller number than what we started with? Yes. OK, that's always going to be the case. Now, instead of just ending up at smaller values like six minus four, we ended up at two. Now we're going to end up in the negatives in some instances. OK, so when we subtract a positive, we're always going to go down our number line to smaller values. Um, let's look now at the opposite situation when we subtract a negative. OK, um, this is where things tend to get a little bit confusing because we have the subtraction, but then we also have the negatives involved. So if this is your second time watching the video, uh, go ahead and copy down what you see here for the bottom half of your notes page. 
Okay, underneath kind of where you made your section, um, go ahead and take a pause and copy down the three number lines and the three problems. Okay, so as you will notice with these three problems, um, we have parentheses to highlight what numbers are negative. So you'll notice there's a parentheses around the negative three, the negative two, and the negative five, because this is saying this is a negative number. Um, and then subtraction is going to be outside of the parentheses. So most of the time you will see the parentheses that kind of highlight to you what is a uh, negative number versus what is subtraction. All right. Um, so here's what happens when we subtract a negative. Okay. Traditionally, what happens when we subtract a positive, like we talked at the uh, top of the page, is we end up at a smaller value. We go down the number line. However, when we subtract a negative, so I'm going to put subtract and then inside the circle a negative, what ends up happening is this negative sign is going to tell us to go in the opposite direction. So subtraction means we're going to go down, end up at a smaller value. But when we subtract a negative, it's saying, nope, we're actually going to do the opposite because these negative numbers are the opposite of their positive numbers. So what happens when we subtract a negative we're actually gonna go up the number line, okay? So a lot of times we're gonna end up at higher values than what we start with. Um, and a lot of times uh, what we can do as well is when we have a subtraction of a negative, we can rewrite these subtraction problems as addition problems, just like we could rewrite any subtraction problem as an addition problem, like if it was just positive numbers. So, um, <clears throat> We'll talk about that at the end, like how we can rewrite them, but let's model on the number line so that way y'all can see how this situation works, okay? So we have the problem six minus negative three. So just like before, we're gonna locate the first number on the number line, and then we're gonna go from there. So um, let's say, let's put six somewhere in the middle. Let's put six right here on the number line, okay? And when we subtract three, Typically what happens is we go down the number line, right? However, since we're subtracting a negative, we're actually gonna go up the number line three spots. So I'm gonna go up one, two, three, and this ends up being at positive nine. So six minus a negative three is actually positive nine. When we subtract a negative, um, again, it's like we're doing the opposite. Instead of going down and ending up at a smaller value, we're ending up at a higher number, okay? You can, someone um, told this to me when I was learning how to subtract uh, negatives. You can kind of think about this. Like if you, uh, when you talk about math, if money is, is something that you understand pretty well. Like if someone puts something in terms of money, it makes it a little bit more clear to you. Think about subtracting a negative as somebody taking away your debt. Like you owe someone $3, but they took away that debt. And so you still have your full $9, if that makes sense. It's not quite as clear, but it's just one thing that may kind of help you understand a little bit more. Let's try a different one. We're gonna start off at a negative. So let's say that um, we're gonna put zero right here. And then we're gonna start off at negative four. So one, two, three, four, here's negative four. Okay, um, so when we subtract a negative, we're gonna go up our number line two spots. So if we go up our number line two spots, one, two, we end up at negative two. So negative four minus a negative two is negative two. We went up the number line two spots. Up here, we went up the number line three spots. Um, let's try one more situation. We are gonna start off at 10. I'm gonna put 10 down here, kind of towards the bottom of the number line. When we subtract a negative, we're gonna go up the number line. Since we're subtracting a negative five, we're gonna go up the number line five spots. So if we go up the number line five spots, one, two, three, four, five, we're gonna end up at positive 15, okay? So when we subtract a negative, we are always gonna be going up the number line, okay? So what that means in terms of kind of like a rule or a pattern to take note of is when we subtract a negative, um, we're gonna go up the number line. I'm gonna just put up the number sign line. Okay, and subtracting a negative is the same thing as adding the opposite. 
Okay, so this is what I mean by we can rewrite our problems as addition and it represents the same thing. So if we look at the examples that we just had, um, I'm going to use a different color so that way you can see I'm going to write it right above the examples. So we can rewrite six minus negative three as six plus the opposite of negative three and the opposite of negative three is positive three. So six plus three is nine, which is the same answer we got when we subtracted the negative. Let's try this example. Negative four minus negative two, we can rewrite this as negative four plus the opposite of negative two, which is positive two. And negative four plus two is negative two, which is the same thing we got when we subtracted the negative, right? And then let's look at the last example. 10 minus negative five, this is the same thing as 10 plus the opposite of negative five, which is positive five, and 10 plus five is 15, okay? So if the subtracting of negatives confuses you, you can always rewrite it as plus whatever the opposite of the number is, which for the most part is always gonna be a positive, right? Because the opposite of negative numbers is a positive number. That doesn't necessarily mean that your answer's always gonna be positive, um, because if you start off with a negative, depending on what you add, like you could still be negative, kind of like in this situation, but it's always the same thing as adding the opposite. Um, so if this is your second time watching the video, I am going to show you uh, what your practice problems are. If this is your first time watching the video, you can go ahead and kind of start the video back over so that way you can go through and get uh, your notes. Here are your practice problems for this video. There are four of them, okay? So the first one is subtracting a negative is the same as blank. Number two, I want you to rewrite the problem negative four minus negative three minus negative one as an addition problem. Then I want you to solve the problem 12 minus 20. Then I want you to solve the problem 100 minus negative 51. If you have any questions, please do not forget to put it in your need to ask section. And I hope everybody has an awesome day. See you soon.